I'm David Gafford and I want to say welcome back to the Barbecue Lab. Today we're going to give you our two-month review of the Uni Coda 16 and we've got it all coming up for you right now. The Uni Coda 16 is a outdoor pizza oven that is really designed to be used with either natural gas or propane. We have ours set up for propane and we've used it for probably around 30 to 40 pizzas in the last two months that we've had the unit. What I want to do today is I want to walk through the unit, show you the dimensions, walk you through some of the things that we've learned about it and help you know if it's a good purchase for you to be able to make. So let's start with the measurements. I have my handy dandy uh, tape measure here. Handy dandy. So if we look at the height of the unit, the unit itself is right around 15 inches tall when the legs are extended and it's sitting on a table. Now the actual height of just the body itself is right around seven and a half inches when you start looking at the bottom of the unit here. From here to the top about seven and a half inches. Now, front to back, the Uni runs just about 24 and a half inches, if you look from the front to the back, just a little bit over two feet. And then width, from a width perspective, we're looking at right around 22 to 23 inches. When it comes to the internal measurements for the Coda 16, one of the things I wanted to know was can I cook taller breads and other things that I might want to cook with such high heat with this oven? And one of the things that's a limiting factor here is the actual size of the entrance where you would put your bread or your dough or whatever it might be. And depending on the height that you're looking for when you want to pull that out, this might not be tall enough. So if you measure the entrance from the bottom to the top, you're right at around five to five and a half inches of height. And so if you're planning on cooking something like a sourdough bowl bread, or if you're cooking something that's taller, this may not be the oven for you. This is primarily a pizza oven. And we're talking about pizza ovens because pizza is you know, usually an inch or two in height. Can you do a deep dish pizza in this? Sure, absolutely, because deep dish pizzas are still only two or three inches tall and they will fit inside this opening. So when you start thinking about the internal measurements, the height is one consideration. A second consideration is the size of a pizza you can put inside. When you go to measure the internal area for the Unicota 16, you will actually find that from side to side, from the burner to the opposite side is about 16 and a half inches. Now that 16 and a half inches means that you can put a 16 inch pizza in there and still have a quarter inch or so on each side but that's asking a lot of that pizza oven, especially because when you start looking at the L-shaped burner inside, you have a burner that runs along the left side of the unit, and that burner continues along the back side of the unit. So when you're cooking a 14, 15, or 16 inch pizza, you'll notice that the section around the back and the section around the side will cook much faster, and you need to be able to rotate the pizza during the time of the cook. Now, most pizzas in this oven will cook somewhere between 90 and 120 seconds. That means you're actually cooking at extremely high heat, and the target heat for the stone on the inside of the unit is right around 930 to 932 degrees. Rotating a pizza throughout a cook is not a problem though, as the pizza peels that Uni offers, as well as the rotating peel that Uni offers, makes it quite easy to take a pizza and rotate it during a cook. But those are some accessories that you might wanna include if you're thinking about adding this pizza oven to your outdoor arsenal. This unit uses propane for fuel, and we just have it hooked up to some 20 pound propane tanks that we can refill at our local Ace Hardware or grocery store. With that propane being the fuel, we have a very stable and steady flame throughout any cook that we do, and that's something I really enjoy. Uni has multiple versions of the pizza oven, including the Uni Pro, which allows you to cook with charcoal or cook with wood or some other versions that actually cook with pellets. But I find that for even cooking, you're gonna get incredible evenness when you're using propane as a fuel, and that's one of the things that really attracted me to the Coda 16. 
The other thing that I was surprised about when I looked at the Coda 16 was that this is actually a portable pizza oven. And since we're looking at the portability of this oven, that means it's something that you can pick up and go with relative ease. Now I say relative ease because this thing weighs right around 40 pounds, and so you can pick it up and take it with you, but it's a lot easier to move with a friend. For example, this is 40 pounds, I can pick it up, it's not that difficult, but then when you start thinking about traversing steps in and out of the house and trying to get it into the car, it's a lot easier if you have someone to help you do it. We have taken this unit off site a few times, like to mom and dad's house to make some Neapolitan style pizzas with friends, and this unit has been portable quite easily. The Uni Coda 16 has three legs that it stands on, and one of the things that I'm the biggest fan of is the rubberized feet on the bottom. It makes it so this thing doesn't want to move. Now we have this on a table, and it's, so we have a tabletop here in the studio, and I can move this around and it doesn't want to move, and it's still stable, and I like the stability of the unit. I have seen some other pizza ovens on the market that if you try to shove around on, they're pretty flimsy and they'll shake and move. This one's re really rather sturdy though, and I like that. It's really secure once it's set up. One of the things that I always say is that if we're going to be moving it around before we do anything like turning it on, we always wanna secure the legs and make sure that they are set and set in position so that it is really stable. The Unicoda 16 is really designed for Neapolitan style pizzas. That's a Naples style pizza, which uses a double zero flour, which is a much finer refined flour than what we know as all purpose flour here in the United States. Neapolitan style is traditionally a two topping pizza using tomatoes and mozzarella cheese. Margarita pizza is a style of Neapolitan style pizzas that include San Marzano tomatoes, mozzarella and basil as the toppings. One of the great things about this is that you can use all types of different toppings to make your favorite type of pizza. But it's really gonna start with a successful Neapolitan pizza style dough. That dough is something that Uni gives out on their website, and that's something that you'll want to be able to have some experience with. We recommend starting with Uni's recipe and then modifying it if you're finding that it's too damp or if it's too dry, depending on your elevation and area. Before we actually get to cooking on the uni, I wanna share with you our four keys to a successful Neapolitan pizza. The first thing I would have you look out for is that the bottom of the crust should be cooked through and not doughy. On Neapolitan style pizzas, it's really important to make sure that the stone on the bottom of the pizza oven is super hot to be able to make up for the fact that the bottom is not going to be getting the direct flame that's arching over the top of the pizza oven. So you wanna be able to make sure that the bottom of the crust is done. And that's where you really ought to consider using a laser thermometer to get the temperature of the stone base of the oven before you ever try to launch your pizza. The second thing that you ought to be on the lookout for is that the edges of the crust should be browned and crispy, but not burned. We talked a little bit about how the L-shaped burner on the Uni is gonna give you about 180 degree flame exposure, but that means that you have to keep rotating the pizza throughout the cook. You want the edges to be browned and crispy, but not burned, and that means that you're going to have to monitor the pizza throughout the entire cook. The crust should bubble up with air pockets and rise as it's cooked, and the topping should be cooked and melted, but not torched, because you're really waiting for the bottom of the crust to finish cooking. The secret is really understanding what you need the stone to be from a temperature perspective before you actually put your pizza in because the stone temperature is really gonna help determine that bottom doneness. So this is our take on the margarita pizza using the Uni Coda 16. So we have our Domate dough tray here, which we've gone ahead and we've gotten our four dough balls ready. Now this is a single batch of the Uni pizza dough recipe. And they say that you can cut this between three and five individual dough balls. We've decided to go four for this and we're expecting a individual pizza of about 12 to 14 inches in size, uh, depending on the elasticity of the dough. So what we'll do to start is I'll go ahead and grab a little bit of the flour here and we're gonna go ahead and flour our cutting board a little bit. Make sure that we have a work surface that's ready to receive the dough. Then I'm just gonna take one of these dough balls and I'm gonna move it over to the tray. I will hand this back over here. What we wanna do once we have the dough ball onto the cutting board here is we wanna to begin to press the dough ball 
out. And we want to go ahead and create the crust around the outside by pressing some of the air from the middle out to the outside. Now in doing this, you'll start seeing the natural crust on the outside form. We want to get the air out of the middle. And then once you have this, you can begin to start stretching it with your hand as well. So we have that, we can go ahead and take it and start stretching it with our hands and stretching it out. There's a bunch of different ways to stretch your dough. I mean, you've seen the, the traditional way where people will throw it up in the air and stretch it that way. You'll see quite a few videos online where people stretch it this way. They kind of let the weight of the dough do the heavy lifting for them. But the idea is you want to start getting to the point where you can start seeing through the pizza so you can actually start getting a thinner crust on the bottom because that's what you need to be able to cook by the heat of those stones on the bottom. So I'll come back through here, make sure we have some kind of a circular shape. And I find that after a while, if you let this dough, uh, if you actually take this dough and press it out and then give it a few minutes, the elasticity will kind of settle down and you can actually stretch it a little, bit, a little bit farther than you can get almost any other way. Another way is to use the simple stretch method where you take it like this and you're just pushing out on the dough to get yourself a wider pizza base. Now, don't be afraid to tear it. If you actually do tear the crust, all you have to do is pinch it back together and then you'll be fine, you're back in business. <clears throat> but what you should be able to see here <clears throat> is that we have quite a thin crust in the middle. And if I were to hold it up to the light, you can almost see through it. See that spotting? You can almost see through that on the pizza dough. And that's what you're looking for, is you wanna be able to almost see through the bottom of the crust. That way you know that bottom of the crust is going to cook by placing it directly on the stone. I think we'll call this one good for this pizza. <clears throat> and now it just comes back to making sure that you have some kind of movement on the cutting board and it's not going to stick because the whole time is while you're putting your toppings on, you want to make sure this doesn't stick to the bottom um, <clears throat> because that dough is going to want to stick. So you can always add a little extra flour underneath if you want. Now we're going to start with our pizza sauce and this is pizza sauce that we made with San Marzano tomatoes. And so we're going to go ahead and take some of this, put it in the center then simply spread it out around the pizza. <coughs> then after that, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of cheese. And this is mozzarella cheese. This is the fresh variety. We're going to add a little bit of this. And you can go ahead and add the basil, like what we're getting ready to do here is you can add basil, <clears throat> but we're gonna go ahead and save our basil until afterwards and have it put on the pizza. So now that we have the tomatoes and the mozzarella on, all we need to do now is get it onto our pizza peel and get it ready to launch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab our uni pizza peel and I'm gonna go ahead and get this transferred. We'll get the camera set up so you can see us launch it into the, into the pizza oven and then we'll be off to the races. Now before you launch, give it a little shimmy, make sure that it's not gonna stick. Then you take it, let one end touch, pull your peel out, and there you have it. <clears throat> now we're gonna go ahead and let this sit for probably about 30 seconds before we actually turn the pizza. But you can see it's already starting to rise around the outside. <clears throat> that mozzarella is beginning to melt. We're gonna keep an eye on it and see if we can keep the crust from burning out on the outside. You can see how it's rising unevenly. The side that's closest to the heat is actually rising quite a bit. The side that's away from the heat is not. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it. And what you can see here is how the crust has already started to turn a little brownish. And that's okay. We just want to make sure it doesn't go much further than that. So I've given the pizza a twist <clears throat> and we'll put it back on. And we're just watching that crust around the outside, making sure that it doesn't get too done. 
Now, if you buy some of the uni accessories, which we'll link to in the description below, you can make sure that you can turn the pizza inside of the uni pizza oven without having to actually pull it out to turn it. Notice those nice bubbles that are forming in the crust. <clears throat> you can see those bubbles forming. <clears throat> There's a look at the crust. And you see this dark brown on this side. And on this side, we still have white and dough. Go ahead and turn it this way. And we'll go again. And the further back you go, and the closer to the side, the more fire and the more heat you'll get directly to the pizza dough. So depending on what you want to have happen, you want to put it further, further in or further back, so depending on what you want to have happen to your pizza. So for example, if you look here at this pizza, you can see that I have a brown crust almost all the way around. This right here could maybe use a smidge more, but not too long, just maybe a couple seconds. <clears throat> and there you have a classic uni pizza. To top it off, we're gonna go ahead and just tear a few basil leaves, put our basil leaves on top. Whoop, windy. That's what happens when you cook outside. And there you have it, classic margarita pizza in the Uni Coda 16 pizza oven. All right, so all that's left is now for us to just cut it and give it a try. So we use this lovely little pizza cutter, which we like, which we'll link to in the description below. And there you have it, margarita pizza. And if you look at the bottom here, you can see the bottom is nice and done. It's not floury, it's not burned, but it is nice and crispy. And that's one of the beauty, beautiful things that comes out of using a pizza oven like this, that's designed for margarita pizza. So one of the things about a margarita pizza is when you actually look at the crust, you have this gorgeous, gorgeous air pockets within the crust. That's one of the things I like so much about it. But with a classic Neapolitan style, fold the slice. Mm. Take a bite. Oh man, that's good. The freshness of the sauce is what really puts it over the top. That, the fresh basil on the top, the melted mozzarella, and that crispy crust, crispy bottom. This pizza oven <clears throat> is really fantastic. And I hope you consider giving it a shot. If you're interested at all, I'll put a link to Uni down in the description. And if you click that link, that just helps us as a channel. It helps us bring in more fun things like this to be able to cook with and show you how you can use it at your house. And uh, we'd sure appreciate your support. But this is a great pizza. And uh, I want to make sure that I give a shout out to our camera person, my lovely wife. <clears throat> and so I'm going to offer her a slice of this delicious pizza so she can have some here. Because you never want to you never want to forget the people who help you behind the scenes. <clears throat> They're the ones who make the magic happen. So. <clears throat> This is David from the Barbecue Lab. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in, in a pizza oven, an Uni Coda 16, it gets our stamp of approval. We really like this thing. So give it a shot. Check the link out in the description below. And we look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Barbecue Lab. Mmm. Mmm. So good.